Welcome back to Cruising America, everyone. Today we're not visiting any place, but showing our Starlink mount instead. We're Steve and Kathleen. We're Cruising America in our 35-foot fifth-wheel RV, chasing 70-degree weather year-round. If you'd like to watch our previous videos, please click the Cruising America playlist link in the description below this video. Otherwise, enjoy our current episode starting now. We just got our system. Starlink is literally just an antenna and wireless router. The entire system is built into the antenna. The computer, the motors, everything. It's an expensive piece of gear too, so between replacement value and significantly more obstruction if placing the antenna on the ground, I opted to mount it on our RV roof. After experiencing Utah's spring windstorms, I did not trust this low profile four-legged mount on our roof without a permanent installation, nor did I want to drive new holes into our roof. I decided to go with the pole mount on the ladder. I wanted a strong mount, but one I could install from the ground. After talking with my buds at the local Ace Hardware store, I decided to go with 2 inch ABS pipe because it's black. We saw a white class C recently with PVC for a mount and the whites clashed. Of course ABS is less rigid and I was concerned. The antenna is fairly heavy and a nice sail for the Utah wind. Would the pipe hold? I asked because I designed it 8 feet tall so I could access the roof without risk of bumping it. Approximately 4 feet of pipe would be unsupported. I bought both number 1 and number 2 pipe hangers because they didn't have 3 of each. I bought rubber mat in 1 16th and 1 8th inch thickness to insulate the hangers and serve as a bushing for the antenna post. For the mounts, I used ABS fittings, a coupler for the base, and two 3 inch to 2 inch reducers. I used a Dremel to grind out the pipe stops inside the reducers and slightly expand the inner diameter of the 2 inch side so the pipe would slide through more easily. I mounted the coupler with a 3 quarter inch bolt and lock nut in the bottom half of the coupler below the pipe stop I didn't remove. I mounted the reducers in the 3 inch flange with 3 quarter inch bolts and lock nuts so the pipe could slide through unobstructed. I can install the pipe from the ground by sliding it up through the two reducers, then dropping the bottom into the coupler. The blue painter's tape marks the bottom of the pipe area I lube with dry PTFE when necessary to both clean and facilitate sliding through the reducers. I routed out the two inch sides of the reducers just enough to allow sliding the pipe. I didn't want the pipe slapping the reducers in the wind. Then I put a 3 inch carriage bolt 6.5 inches from the top as a stopper for the antenna post. You have to leave room at the top for the antenna to rotate as it scans for satellites and selects the best azimuth for reception. Installation is simple. I install the pipe from the ground, climb halfway up, have my wife Kathleen hand me the antenna, she runs the cable up the pipe while I install the carriage bolt, then I plug in and seat the antenna. I have to go up anyway to install our weather station's wind sensor and the security camera covering our door. Inside, the wireless router sits on the end cap next to the TV. We run the cable behind the couch over the other end cap and down to the slide out near the floor. The extra cable is coiled between the couch and end cap and stays there permanently out of sight. When we're setting up, we stop the slide about 4 inches from full extension, run the cable through the gaskets on the back side of the slide, then finish extending. 
I mark the cable with tape so we know how much to push through to minimize external exposure and keep the cable off the ground. All that's left is connecting the router and plugging it in. The antenna activates, scans the sky, and moves to the best azimuth for the current location. As a final note, Starlink has changed their service. Now you can buy roaming, called portability on their website, for $25 a month. This alleviates the previous setup challenge of finding a local address for service in each location. So far we haven't noticed any connectivity issues and the speeds are fantastic. Starlink is by far the best value for the price, at least compared to internet costs in Texas, our home state.